Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television! Yay! For the community, by the community. and you're watching Life in Style with Sarah. On tonight's show, my guest Maureen Hazley Jones, the English lady, is back again for part two of our spring gardening series. Maureen, thanks for coming back. It's a pleasure, absolutely. We had so much to talk about last time. I'm glad we have another chance I know. to catch up on all the things we didn't get a chance I to mean, talk about. I mean, at this about. time of year, we, we could talk forever, couldn't we? We absolutely yes. could. I have, I have at least four sheets of questions oh, that my some friends goodness. asked me. So. <laughs> um, I did want to go back to something that we talked about last time. Yes. And that was kind of the, the end uh, note was that the most important ingredient in the garden is manure, manure, manure. Aged manure. Aged manure. Right. So I wanted to share with you that I was very inspired by that. Mm -hmm. And I went out and I went and bought 400 pounds of aged manure. Oh, my goodness. In 40 pound bags. Yes. 10 40 pound bags. Right. And it actually is very inexpensive, which. Mm -hmm. I guess, considering the ingredient, you would hope it would, would be. That's right. Hauled it home, put it all out in the garden. Mm -hmm. I still need probably another 400 pounds. There you go. And then the next day I had to go to yoga because I didn't do my stretches like you recommended. <laughs> Then, I had to stretch my back out. <laughs> there you go. You know, any of the folks, I mean, most of us have been couch potatoes over the winter, uh -huh. you know, except for the, the die-hard, you know, right. exercise folks, etc. too. Very important to stretch. It, you know, yeah. it is. And um, drink lots of water so you keep yes. hydrated. Yeah. yeah. So you want to be healthy so you can garden. Exactly. <laughs> but don't put too much aged manure, just about okay. an inch, you okay. know, throughout, um, except, of course, for the veg garden. That needs much more. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I just did, I, what I ended up doing, because I knew I wasn't going to have enough, mm -hmm. is I ended up um, picking, I sort of picked my favorites, and I was like, all right, I'm going to start with my favorites, and I put, I, it was like I mulched around them with the yes, manure, and yes. I'll go back and fill in the rest. Good, but, yeah, yeah, anyway. don't, yeah, because it'll, you know, the rest of the soil will say, hey, what about me, you know. Right, yes. Exactly. <laughs> we'll have some barren spots in the garden. And remember also, love, you're putting it down now, uh -huh. an inch now, and then when you've got everything tidied up, you'll put down the mulch, but um, then you'll, again in July, and then again in, in okay. October. Build up that lovely so continue to structure. Add it. Yes. Okay. Yes. I will, I will do that. Good. It actually went pretty quickly. Good. So it was good. Right. Um, uh, speaking of mulch, I had um, a friend, I sent out an email blast saying, I'm interviewing Maureen again. Give me <laughs> some questions. One of the questions was, how frequently should you mulch? Every year? And what is the best mulch to use? The best mulch, yes, every year. Every year. In and the how spring. Thick? In the spring and then again in the fall when really? you put the bed together for the, for the winter. Okay. Particularly if you've planted uh, like some um, evergreens or, or some plants in, say, September. Okay. You're protecting those roots then. Yeah, about an inch. Okay. All, all over, and the natural fine bark mulch. Mm -hmm. Not the, uh, not that red stuff. The red dyed stuff. And you know, I, I, I told folks last time, stay away from that cocoa mulch, cocoa it's poisonous, mulch. yes. Now what about, I know you can, I believe the town of West Hartford sells truckloads of, um, you know, the trees and things that they've mulched up. Right, uh, right. Uh, you know, the sticks and all the stuff that we send off in the yes, uh, yes. curbside pickup. Right. Is that, could you use that rather yeah. than getting the bags at the, the Yes, you can center? do, that you would can do, but take a look at it, okay. you know, take a look and, and see that it's not got a lot of, um, l you know, large pieces of sticks or stones in it, you but know. it's truly... It's truly nice and fine, fine. and good okay. quality, okay. Um, and it will smell wonderful, I mean, mm -hmm. it, that woody smell is mm -hmm. wonderful, okay. yes. And okay. also, many of the, the, the towns also have a composting facility, mm -hmm. you know, to do with, um, you know, compost that you can buy. The leaves and things. Yes, yeah, the composted leaves, the shredded leaves. But nevertheless, with that, still use the aged manure. The aged manure yes. along with it. Yes. Okay, okay. So now, this time of year, we also think about trimming and transplanting. Yes. So, 
are there any no-nos or things you definitely should do? Like, it, is it an okay time to transplant and divide? And yes, May is a good time. Okay. You know, the ground is warmed up, and um, it's a good time to transplant. Okay. Um, however, the spring blooming perennials, mm -hmm. you won't transplant those, like the irises, for instance, mm -hmm. until they have finished blooming. Okay, so azaleas, anything that's blooming, don't move it right now. Well, uh, the azaleas, will, uh, you know, they, they, yeah, I was going to say May, they're blooming, etc. Right. After they finish blooming, okay. which is also when you prune them. But, but definitely, um, you know, again, when you're transplanting, never plant anything any deeper, whether it's a tree, a shrub, a perennial, any deeper mm -hmm. than it is in the earth at the moment. Okay. You know, particularly irises. They are very finicky. Uh, you know, they have those wonderful um, horizontal yes. rhizomes. You just put enough earth on them so they don't topple over. Okay. All right? And do you add anything? Another question I had was what do you add to the soil, if anything, when you're transplanting? Just the aged manure. Just aged right, manure. Right, yeah. You okay. wouldn't, um, you, you would fertilize, actually, the spring plume, uh, blooming perennials, mm -hmm. you won't fertilize, um, you know, then. You will have fertilized them back in uh, um, early April. Okay. Which is when you would have given them, you know, some, uh, some, some organic uh, okay. fertilizer. Okay, so you can right. transplant in May after things have bloomed. Right. No lower than they already are in the ground. Exactly. Don't pile stuff exactly. on top of mm -hmm. them. Or if you're planting, say you're getting something from the garden mm -hmm. center. No Same deep, thing. No, exactly. No deeper than it comes in the pot or in the burlap container, you know, mm -hmm. because otherwise you can lose it. And then and you just put aged manure in the hole with it? In, yes, in the okay. hole. If you're planting some evergreens, though, you can add some peat in the mix as well. Okay and then afterwards you'd mulch. Anything that you plant or transplant though, make sure that you water them in well, um, you know, so they can establish, re-establish, you know, right. over the summer. Yeah, we had put in a border, I think I talked about this last time, where we, we needed to water a lot. Mm -hmm. and I started out, well, we'll, we'll more, move right into watering. I started out by watering with a hose on each bush and it just was tedious, so I got the the um, soaker hoses exactly, and spread them around throughout uh -huh. the trees and then you could just turn them on and let it The soaker hoses through. are really wonderful. You know, I mentioned to you the other day that um, they're very easy to, to, to lay among all of your perennial mm -hmm. trees and shrubs. You can get them from the garden center. You just lay them on the soil and they have like a clip you know, that kind of a, a, a right, U-shaped like clip. clip. Yeah, to keep them, you know, down on it, okay. keep, keep them uh, tight and um, attach them to the hose on a timer. Okay. Yeah, and then the timer can go, you know, 15 minutes in the morning and then 15 minutes at the, at the end of the day, around five o'clock, you know, is very good. Okay. And uh, yeah, because with a regular hose, which you need to use, of course, on your containers, right. um, but with a regular hose, you lose 40% in evaporation. Wow. But um, soaker hoses in the borders, and then on your lawn, you, you'd use sprinkler. But make sure the sprinklers, again, are on a timer. Right. And that, that they are directed to the grass, and you're not wasting uh, water by it hitting concrete or something like that, you know, the yes. pathway. Yeah, we, right. had, we had a sprinkler head that was watering our driveway nicely. <laughs> we had to change that. <laughs> Why are we watering the driveway? Exactly. One way to keep it clean. <laughs> right, exactly. Yes. I'm like, that's not, right. that's not a good place for the water. Uh -huh. You know, the other thing you mentioned when we were talking about soaker hoses was you can leave them in. You can cover them with your mulch or whatever exactly. and leave them. You leave them. Indefinitely. Absolutely, yes. I didn't realize that. Yes. I, we pulled ours up. Oh, you did? Yeah, so oh, I need to put them back down. Pity you didn't <laughs> speak to me earlier, I know. Right? Where were you? <laughs> no, they, no you, leave, you leave them there. You leave I mean, them after in. a few years, you may notice that, you know, an area, um, because you're not going to have the mulch very thick, so you'll, you'll know when, when everything's been watered. You know, you'll see damp. Um, you mm -hmm. know, dampness through the, uh, through the mulch. Um, but if you notice some dry areas, it may be that uh, a coupling has come loose okay. on the, on, or, or else maybe there's a piece of the hose that's worn out. So you just cut that out and you can add another piece in there. Right, and just, yes. so just do a repair. Exactly. Like the sprinkler guys yes. do. Mm -hmm. So for, spring, for watering the lawn, mm -hmm. like we have ours set, and I think it goes like three times a week, it starts at like 2 in the morning and each zone goes and it ends like at 
five or are you six. on um, um, automatic irrigation yes are you, are you yeah. on town water or well water town town water okay um, so is that not the right thing to do to do it three times a week or well again it frequently? depends on whether you've you've, you've had um, uh, rain if well, it does have a rain gauge, it so does if it's rained, it won't turn off. All right, okay. But with, you, you need to keep your, your borders watered mm -hmm. and, of course, your vegetable garden. Right. They're heavy feeders and they like lots of moisture. However, pretty, well, they pretty much hits the yard, some of the borders. But right. Not, you know. However, um, uh, don't water the grass until that green glow begins to fade. Okay. So I would say, except maybe if we get a really hot spell, you know, mm -hmm. three weeks of no rain and very hot, then you could do it, say, even twice a week. Um, but otherwise, once a week uh, would, really? should be fine. But keep an eye on it. Okay. You know, if it really seems to be fading out, then you can click it on for another time. Okay. Because the more water you can conserve, the better. Exactly. I didn't, yeah. yeah. Right. And, and also okay. get a rain barrel if you can. You know, yep. I was going to ask yes. you about rain barrels. They're marvelous. So you just put them in a corner, and it, does it come Attach down through a gutter, or does it just It comes cut? down through, your, through the, the drain pipes, yes. Okay. And you have that under, you know, the, the, the rain barrel underneath, mm -hmm. and you can buy them with a spigot on. So you, know, so you can just oh, uh, get the water out rather than scooping up, yes. And now I picture like a big, you know, yeah, like a, four feet round. Yes, like, uh, you know, the, sort of um, like a the wine, wine barrels. Cask. Yes, yeah. the wine casks. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's a good, I know, I yes. know just the spot where I'm going to put one. There you go. Nothing will grow there, so I'll put my <laughs> right there. And there's a gutter right there. Um, so let's see, so we talked about trimming. What about, do you prune... Uh, herbs and tomato plants. I have a friend who's like, do you, do you, what do you need to do no, with those? No, you don't no, have no. to do that. No, no. Um, for instance, um, herbs, uh, they should have been, you know, they should be uh, pruned in the fall, mm -hmm. like your uh, perennial tarragon, uh, sage, thyme, okay. oregano, all of those in, in the fall, October. Uh, lavender, which is an, which is an herb as well, you, uh, you, uh, that should have been um, cut down to about six inches from the ground in April. Okay. All right, so th th that's that. But, but tomatoes, no. You, you don't you, have no, to do. No, none, none of that kind of stuff. Just, let them, yes. just feed them and let them grow. But, but the other um, creatures that need to be trimmed would be your evergreens. They should be uh, pruned um, in the late winter, you know, so say in okay. March. Oh. Uh, but the, the, uh, the, the, the flowering trees and shrubs, when they have finished blooming, is when you would prune them. Only by 25%, though. Okay. You only prune um, by 25%, whether it's an evergreen like rhododendron, for instance, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, a viburnum, or, um, yeah, Carlisi viburnum is wonderful, mm -hmm. Korean spice. Only by 25%, otherwise you'll shock it too much. Okay. Okay? Okay. Um, now, what do you feed? We talked about the manure, which feeds the soil. Mm -hmm. But when it comes time to feed your perennials, and what do, what do you use to feed them? I'm assuming it's organic. Organic, and you have to read what it says on the bag. Okay. If it says natural, but you see some chemical in there, mm -hmm. move on to the next one. You want to get, you know, the, the, the complete organics. So what would, what would it say? It would say bone meal, blood meal, seaweed, natural grains, it would say, and you know, okay. that's what it would contain. So it shouldn't have any words you can't pronounce. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> exactly. You it's know. just like food. Right. You don't want to buy things, food, it, that yes. has stuff you can't yeah. pronounce. Oh, yes. Okay. But again, um, uh, as I've mentioned to you, um, I have a sandy soil on my property on the coast. Mm -hmm. I started to build that soil um, three times a year, mm -hmm. 11, 12 years ago. I don't use fertilizers because that soil, if you nourish the soil and build the soil, mm -hmm. it feeds the plants. It feeds the plants. Because you've got okay. all those natural microorganisms in there, including the earthworm with air mm -hmm. casings that are feeding the soil, feeding the plants. So how do you know when you get to that point? I mean, um, how, do you, how do you know you're there? If you are, well, the plants will just look wonderful. Okay. They will just keep, so if they'll flourish. Yes, wonderfully. Yes, yes. You're, you're full good. and bright and, uh, okay. yes, yeah. So should, would a good rule of thumb be don't really worry about fertilizing? Unless, I mean, if you're using the aged manure, if you're mulching, you, unless your plants are seeming weak, I would, I would, don't if you be, it, no, well, well, actually, love, um, if you've been using herbicides and pesticides, uh -huh for a few years, it's going to take at least a year or two for all of that to leach out and away. Okay. Um, and um, so for the first 
two to three years, I would suggest you can use a supplemental organic fertilizer. Okay. And it'll make you feel better too. Right. And then the other thing you do in the middle of the summer, um, you foliar feed, which means okay. you um, attach the, uh, the hose to the spigot mm -hmm. and you put on what's called a proportioner. Right, yeah, yes. like one of those. Yes, jars. and in that yep. you have the manure tea or the seaweed okay. tea. Okay. And um, you, you just spray the foliage. This way you're feeding straight away, you know, the foliage, the fruit. It doesn't have to go down to the ground through the roots or yeah. up through the stem. And you do that like mid July? Is that like yeah, you then? can do it yeah. even once a week during when we get those hot, humid days. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, your website has information if people are interested in, you know, where do you get the seaweed emulsion, all, all that stuff. Absolutely. You can go to your On website. the website, theenglishlady.com. All of that information is all there. All of the info for mm -hmm. what to use in the garden. Go to the eco shop okay. or what to use, and um, and yes, and, and also all kinds of other wonderful tips. Mm -hmm. you know as well. Yeah, so. the vegetable garden I know we could go on for hours about, but you have a nice section on veggie gardening, right. how to lay it out, right. what, to, what to put in there. Absolutely, and, and okay. also in um, Nutmeg Magazine, which just, you know, which is out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for May, um, there's a wonderful article, I think it's on page uh, 16, the best and freshest flavors come from the garden, all to do with vegetable garden and what to do. Oh, excellent. It's a wonderful Let's magazine. Hold that up. I'll hold yeah. that up. It's a great so we can magazine. Get a shot of that. Yes. So this is another way, and beautiful pictures mm. in here. So, lovely. If, ones. if you need the paper in front of you, this is a good. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is a good option. And of course, in Valley Press, there's always an article every week. Okay. And for folks, you know, um, yeah, well, that would be in this area, wouldn't it? Yeah. The Valley mm -hmm. Press. So, and do you have links on your website to those articles as well, or do you? Many of the articles are, are on the website. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, so another. Um, topic that came up several times was insect and pest control. Right. I know in my yard we have um, I'm going to get you to say garden. My garden. I'm garden. sorry. My garden. My garden. No, not yard. Not my yard. My <laughs> garden. And it actually is my garden, not my yard. But we have um, chipmunks. Oh, yes. I've seen, I've actually been gardening and mm -hmm. seen moles run across. Oh, the, yes. They're um, very cheeky. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I was hoping that since we got a dog last summer that mm -hmm. maybe he was going to be our pest control. <laughs> But I'm not sure that's true. So what do you do to try and bugs, you know, organic, rabbits, all that stuff? Right, do do? organic pest control. Number one for, you like the rabbits, the small marauders, you know, the chipmunks uh -huh. and all of those. Put down some cayenne pepper and, um, and garlic. Really? They don't like that stuff. So you just sprinkle it in the sprinkle soil? It, exactly. Or sprinkle it on the plant? No, not on the plant. Not on you the can plant. burn. Yeah, you, okay. you burn. Yeah, just on the soil. And the other thing is to, um, what was I? Oh, I know. All of us have old sneakers, stinky sneakers, right? Yeah. So put one of those. Put one of those out in the, uh, you know, in an area where you know these creatures congregate. Okay. And the the human smell will drive them we'll away. Drive them away. As okay. well as uh, if you have a dog, which you do, mm -hmm. um, have him lie on an old piece of carpet. You know, okay. small piece, and then put that out in an area where you know these creatures ah. are, particularly to do with protecting your veg garden. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah we, I had a vegetable garden a few years ago, and I, I'm sure there was, I could tell that there was a raccoon that was coming and just kind of going exactly. on each tomato, and there was, fortunately I had enough, there was like, all right, you know, you can have a but couple But make sure tomatoes, you have a fence, you know. Right, I didn't yes. have a fence, so ah. that was my, okay. my bad, I did not have right. a fence. And then, of course, you can plant things that protect you, you're, not just your veggies, but, but also your other plants, you know, in your other borders. Okay. If you plant anything that's fragrant, um, insects don't like fragrance, and that will they help don't. keep them away. Okay. Like honeysuckle and lavender and napita, which is cat mint, you know. Okay. So that will help keep the, the marauders at bay. Is nasturtium and marigolds and are those as They're, well? Those are excellent, and okay. sunflowers, because what they do as well, they attract the good, the good insects which eat okay. the bad, the bad the guys. The bad ones. Yes, exactly. So you can so, either repel them or attract their enemies. Attract, exactly. Okay. And that, that attract the ground beetle, uh, put down a rock or, or a, um, a log for it to hide under. And okay. um, they eat uh, the slugs, you know, the okay. slugs, terrible yes. creatures. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the other thing is dry dog food is good for slugs as well, or a little uh, saucer of beer. 
Dry dog dry food. Dry dog food. You get some dry dog food, add a little water to it so you've got nice mushy lumps. Okay. Go out in the early evening where you know the slugs are gathering. Okay. And put down these little piles. And, um, you know, if you see a slug watching you around the corner, pretend you haven't seen him, you know. <laughs> Go back no in, eye contact. <laughs> exactly. Back in the ha come out an hour later, you'll find that they're full as a tick, flat on their back, can't move. You scoop them up with a shovel, put them okay. in a garbage bag, and throw them away. So that okay. and, and so a tote, it's kind of like the beer, the beer, the cup of beer. They'll come and it will attract them, and you can sing. Exactly, kind of thing. and then they drown in it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And then also uh, put a toad house in a shady uh, spot. Okay. You know, the cracked pot uh -huh. uh, with, with a hole in it and uh, with, a, with a saucer with, with moist rocks in. You'll attract the toad family and they eat about 200 of the bad uh, bugs every night. That's enough. And your kids yeah. can watch and see if the toads have come. Yes, they can. They love that. That would yes. I like that. Yes. That's, that's excellent. Um, now, my mom used to have, for roses, you know, the beetles, the Japanese beetles. Yes. She used to have... Those bags. Oh, that was horrible. The, 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 beetle the beetles traps. would go in. The beetle yes. traps. It was so gross. <laughs> is that still something that's useful? It or is, not but they've, really? got, they've got bigger bags now, actually. But, oh, but again, okay. it's on the website. There are okay. organic ways to, are, to get okay. rid of them. But, but, but with, the, with the Japanese beetles, don't have them right next to your plants. Or right next to the Which roses. is what she did. They were hanging right no, in the no, middle. No. It was hanging put right in the middle over, of the put roses. Put them over like a neighbor you don't like. Well, I, I, you didn't hear Oh, we don't have any we of those. We don't. No, no. <laughs> so put them far away from your plants, and the beetles will be attracted to it, you know, and stay right, away from them. Why attract your them yes, to Yes, you don't want the to do that. Plants. That no, makes a lot of because sense. Because some of them may say, oh, I'm not interested in this sex trap. I'm going to eat the roses or whatever right, instead. Eat your roses. Yes. Interesting. But also, um, yeah. many. Um, uh, again, go on the website. There's a wonderful spray called Piola, P-Y-O-L-A. Okay. Wonderful for, um, you know, getting rid of, uh, you know, protecting against black spot and all of those kinds of things. On roses. Yes. I get that every year. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to have to do that. And also, feed your roses. Again, go to the website mm -hmm. for the organic food. Mm -hmm. But stop feeding the roses in August. Okay. Because they need to go into a slow dormancy. Dormancy, okay. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So um, we've talked about maintaining what we have, but what about planning for what we want? Now you have some plans based on right. sunlight, and mm -hmm. talk, talk about that a little bit. The laminated garden uh, plans mm -hmm. that, that I did a few years ago, okay. and uh, very popular. People love them because it's, they're so simple. They're on the website, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the eco shop. Uh, they're laminated because you can wipe off dirt or manure. Mm -hmm. And, um, for instance, the sun garden, it tells you on the front exactly, you know, what to do, preparation, maintenance, and everything. And on the back, it's got the, 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 the design of mm -hmm. the garden, um, the plants that you would need, the, the color, the bloom time, the height they get, uh, you know, the amount that you would need. And it's so simple to follow. Right. So it yes. really just is kind of like an instant... Gar it's like a recipe for a beautiful Very garden. Very easy to follow, though. Right. It's not rocket science. Okay. Um, again, for sun garden, cutting garden, but, mm -hmm. but the cutting garden, it's not annuals, it's perennials. And um, as well um, uh, for dappled shade, medium shade, and deep shade, as well as seaside gardens, too. Okay. Yeah. We did have a question, and I, I actually have a section of my yard that's like this. My garden. Oh, I did it again. Uh, my garden that's like this, that it's quite moist all the time. Yes. What grows really well in kind of shady, moist? Shady, moist. Well, when, one of the things that grows very well, as you know, is, is moss. Moss. Yes, we do have moss. If you've got moss, leave yes. it. I've you know, left it because I hear it. your voice. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be there. Yeah. But, but there are many creatures that like the, the shade. You know, there are some wonderful, there's a native tree called the service berry. Okay. Uh, or the shad blow is the other name for it that loves the moisture there. So does the river birch. Okay. Um, uh, the viburnums, you know, with, with the wonderful spring blossom, as well as a stilby. You know, okay. you've seen the astilbe. Yeah. A still be, um, if you get the, the astilbe that's early, mid-season, and late blooming, mm -hmm. you know, so you have a succession of bloom. Right. You know, it, so a still be can, can stand, I, know they, I knew they could do shade, but they can stand quite moist? Yes, yes. And it, also oh, in your moist area, is it mm -hmm. sunny as well? It's, it gets 
A little bit. Ah. Uh, so not much. Yeah, so hydrangeas wouldn't do. No. Because hydrangeas are a wetland plant, but they need sun as well. Yeah, no, I yeah. don't think they have enough sun. Right. It doesn't have enough right. sun. But so. another one is, that's great is called um, snake root is the common name. Okay. Simsifugia. Um, wonderful and airy and, and, and okay. looks like white lace. And um, another one called aruncus, which is goat's beard. Okay. Also lacy and white. And anything that's lacy and white yeah. in the shade, it's like having a, a, a light switched on. Right. Yeah, lovely. Oh, and of course, great. all of your ferns. There are some wonderful mm -hmm. ferns. I did plant a couple of ferns. And yes, been doing yeah, they well. do very well. Okay. And the foxglove. Foxglove and Columbine. Do all the ground covers, like um, you know, Pachysandra, all of those things, do they do? Actually, I have a huge patch of Pachysandra that's growing just out in the wetlands area. Yes. So I guess, obviously, it does do fine. It does fine. There, yeah. or ivory, uh, ivy, mm -hmm. or um, myrtle. Myrtle, too. Yeah, okay. which has the wonderful periwinkle yes. blue which flower is, in yes. April and May. Yes, which yes. Is, is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, what if you have a tree that's... Um, Damaged. What is the rule of thumb for something that's damaged? How do you know if it's past saving, and what do you, what do you do if it's if it has hmm. life left that you can bring it back? How do you do that? Okay. What are the rules for any, that? Um, any any um, shrub or mm -hmm. um, tree that's fifty percent gone. Okay. Um, is um, uh, you know it, it, it's it's history. had it. Yes. It's, you can't bring it's, it back. It's, no, it's a write off. Okay. Um, but otherwise, you know. Hold to a wait and see attitude. Okay. You know, and be patient, but never feed a sick a tree or shrub or, or plant. Mm -hmm. Never, you know, it's just like when you're ill, you have the mm -hmm. flu, you don't want to it's eat too much. food. Yes, okay. but plenty of liquid. So okay. lots of water, and you can put the aged manure around okay. it, you know. So keep and the soil protect, healthy. Yeah, keep the soil mm -hmm. always, mm -hmm. because the soil can help counteract, you know, whatever's, whatever's going on with doing. the plant. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, we're almost out of time again, but I, th I think we covered most of the questions. I'm Excellent. just trying to see if there are any, Wonderful. and any questions that weren't answered, um, Maureen's website your, is fabulous. Thank you. Has lots and lots of information, lots of detailed information. And people can also um, email us. The, yes. The English lady at the English lady dot com, com too, yes. And you're, I know yes. you're very good about responding yes. to the yes. thousands well, of emails of course, that you get. Yes, and the, um, the, um, um, uh, website is now blog as well, so you can mm -hmm. put lots of comments or questions, and okay. we'll uh, we will answer. And you'll answer that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then you can also pick up your copy of the Nutmeg magazine. Yes. Um, and uh, you know, and the other thing I would like to mention is that West Hartford Community Television is now live uh, streaming live, as well as you can get the latest episodes of Life and Style with Sarah on demand. So if you heard something and you can't quite remember what we said. Mm -hmm. You can go to www.westhartfordcommunitytelevision, whctv.org, um, and click um, on demand and look for Life and Style with Sarah, and you can, Wonderful. can see us again and again and again. Yes, why not, <laughs> right? <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. This has been Life and Style with Sarah. Uh, don't forget to tune in next month for a brand new episode of Life and Style with Sarah. And Maureen, thank you so much again. It's been a pleasure. If I'm lucky, Maureen will come back in the fall. Help I us harvest will. our veggies. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Thanks. Good night. I think we covered almost everything.